I've just disembarked a seven night cruise on board Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas, where I did things that most people would think were impossible on cruise ships. I waited three years for this cruise, and Royal Caribbean definitely do have the reputation of being the most exciting and the best. I wanted to find out if that really was true. Pre-pandemic, Royal Caribbean averaged around six million guests per year, Fans of Royal Caribbean are very loyal to the brand, but as somebody who has no cruise line loyalty, I wanted to know if the entertainment, the food and the ship would be as good as I was promised. Embarkation didn't get off to the best start. It took us around an hour and a half to get into the terminal because there are 11 people on the cruise before us who decided to try and stow away on the ship. That delayed 4,000 people getting on board and caused a lot more work for the crew, so I do hope that those people got in trouble for that. Thankfully though, we had done most of the check-in process on our phones, so when we actually got into the terminal, it probably only took around 15 minutes. Royal Caribbean definitely do have one of the best apps in the industry, and I started loving this app way before we got anywhere near the ship. I'm pretty used to being able to enter some data pre-cruise, but we could even watch the safety videos before we got on the ship. I tried to show it to my cat Hudson, but he was just not interested, but it was great to be able to get that done so we didn't have to do it on board. One of the good things about getting on a cruise later in the day is that our cabins were already ready by the time we got on the ship. I'm usually an inside cabin kind of girl, but when I booked this cruise back in 2019, I booked myself a balcony cabin. I can't remember exactly how much cheaper it would have been to book an inside cabin, but the saving can't have been that much or I wouldn't have done it. But I thought to myself, of all the places in the world to have a balcony, Norway is a place where I think it is worth it. I paid £842 for this cruise, which is just a little bit over $1,000. That was for a seven night cruise based on two people sharing a balcony cabin, and that did include gratuities. I decided to pay those when I booked the cruise. Anthem of the Seas was built in 2015, and although she's not one of the big, big Royal Caribbean cruise ships, she still is pretty huge. As I started to explore the ship, certain features popped out at me as being distinctly Royal Caribbean, and it reminded me of my first Royal Caribbean cruise that I took way back in 2017. One of the first areas on board that we explored was this solarium area. It has this amazing smell, and I'm sure it's a combination of chlorine and, and sun cream, I don't know, but whatever it was, it was very, very nice. It's kind of like an inside pool area. It is adult only. There's a bar here, there's a restaurant here too, and even this cool swing, which I've never seen anything like that on a cruise ship before. The pools in the solarium do close in the evening, which means that there's almost nobody here in the evenings. If you're somebody like me who wants to just sit with a drink and watch the scenery go by, this is a really good place to do it. The solarium area was pretty busy when we first embarked the cruise, but that was probably due to the weather outside. We did try and explore the outside spaces a little bit, but it really was quite rainy. Royal Caribbean do have lifeguards on duty by their swimming pools, and even if it is pouring with rain and there's nobody in the swimming pool, the lifeguard will still be there watching over the pool. I did feel sorry for these people in their big coats, but I understand why they're there. They were always there. Our cruise to Norway was visiting Stravanger, Garanga, Olden and Bergen, all of which are some of the most popular ports in Norway. I was hoping that the weather would get better on our cruise, but I was definitely not going to hold my breath. Later in the cruise, we had fog so bad that the cruise ship had to use the fog horn overnight. Cruise ships do have a lot of tools that they use to navigate when visibility is low, but they still have to use the fog horn if they can't see beyond a certain distance. By this point, we were getting hungry. We had missed lunch because we boarded around half three, but luckily Royal Caribbean's buffet is open almost all of the time. When we walked into the buffet, we were told to wash our hands, which was very good. The buffet was back fully to self-service, so I'm glad that that hand washing was enforced and it really was enforced. Most cruise lines changed to a buffet that was served by the crew during the pandemic, but most of them now are back to self-service. There was so much choice in the buffet and straight away I found a Yorkshire pudding and a cookie, which are two of my favourite things in the entire world. It was such a relief to finally be on this cruise and to have this great meal in front of me. I was so excited at this point. It was around now that I started to notice other guests with these big plastic soda cups that you use to get soda from the soda machines in the buffet. I had bought a soda package, but I hadn't seen a cup mentioned anywhere yet. So we decided to go down to deck five to find out where we got these cups from. We asked a crew member where we could get the cups from and they said that we could pick them up from any bar on board, which we did. 
We did run into a bit of a strange issue as the cruise went on with ordering drinks in the different bars, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. Next, we needed to go and find our muster station. We had watched all of these safety videos already at home, but we still needed to physically go to the muster station, which is where you would meet in the case of an emergency. Ours was the photo studio and checking in there took at most one minute, probably about 20 seconds. My cruise on Independence of the Seas definitely felt much busier, so I started to wonder what the capacity of this cruise was. It wasn't until later in the cruise that I found it out, but this cruise was back at 100% capacity. In reality, it was around 90% full, probably because we weren't cruising in the school holidays, but it was back to normal. This was a normal Royal Caribbean cruise with the right number of people on this ship. It was around now that I found the first thing that I didn't like about this cruise. I hoped that it would get better as the cruise went on, but it never did. Royal Caribbean have both flexible and fixed dining, meaning that you can either sit in the same place at the same time every day, or you can be more flexible. When I think about flexible dining, I think about cruise lines like Norwegian, I think about Morella, and what happens on those cruise lines is you just show up to a restaurant when you're hungry and you sit down and you eat. It is very, very easy. On some cruise lines like P&O, you'll join a virtual queue on your phone or you can join a physical queue and when your table is ready, you will go to dinner. It's very simple. That was not how it worked on our Royal Caribbean cruise. I did see on my phone that I needed to make a booking to go to dinner, but I didn't think that would be a problem. I thought it would just be I'll book and then go to dinner. I saw though that I couldn't get any booking before 8.30 and that was the same every single day of our cruise. I think this is the first cruise that I've ever been on where I preferred eating in the buffet than the main dining room. It wasn't just because of the timings, there are a few other things as well, but I'll talk more about that later in the video. By complete accident, we stumbled across an area called 270. We saw other people queuing up for something and we didn't know what it was, but we decided that we would have a look and see if it was something that we wanted to do. This is where the app really came in handy because we could go on the daily schedule, see what was happening, and we could book a ticket for the show. It was a show called Spectre's Cabaret. We sat on the top level to watch the show and unfortunately I was not allowed to film because of copyright. These screens here, they may not look like much, but they did some amazing things during our show. Each one moved independently so they would kind of interact and it was fascinating to watch the screens and watch how they worked. The next day we had a sea day so we really had the opportunity to put the daily schedule to the test. We ordered a room service breakfast on the cabin TV which was included in our cruise fare. There are some charges for other items and food at other times but the continental breakfast was completely included. Having breakfast delivered to the cabin is always nice. It was even better when we were sitting on the balcony watching an amazing sailing in a fjord just like this. I had a breakfast donut every single day, which is something that I do remember doing on my first Royal Caribbean cruise. Not sure if that's a Royal Caribbean thing. I wouldn't normally have donuts for breakfast, but when on a cruise, even by this point, our first morning on our first sea day, I was enjoying our cruise much more than the Independence of the Seas cruise I took. The Independence of the Seas cruise I took was a five night cruise. It was in autumn, it was in the school holidays, and it just wasn't anything like this one. The daily schedule was full of all kinds of things like trivia, live music, game shows. They have some things that I have no interest in like art auctions or wrinkle seminars, but there are a lot of things on there that we did want to do. We did more trivia on this cruise than any cruise I've ever been on before and it was on the most random range of subjects. We did Harry Potter trivia, 50s music trivia, nautical terms, animated movies, all kinds of things. They did trivia in lots of different venues on board, which I liked. Sometimes on cruises, there'll be one small venue and everyone's trying to get to trivia there. But on this cruise, they did trivia in the pub, they did it in this bar, they did it in 270, and they did it in the music hall. I have to admit, I did nickname the music hall the sick hall as the cruise went on because it definitely had a smell like somebody had been sick in there. It was also the nightclub for the cruise ship, so probably somebody had been, but it didn't have a nice smell. Most of the ship had a nice smell. This was the only bit that didn't smell nice. Anthem of the Seas doesn't have a central street that runs the length of the ship like a lot of other cruise ships do, but she does have this main kind of middle area and everything comes off of this. The most important things in this area are Sorrento's Pizza, which I think was open until 3 a.m. There's a cafe promenade that serves cookies all the time and also a pub down here too. 
There was another bar down here, specialty restaurants, shops, and a cake place that did cost extra. I found it easier than I thought I would to avoid charges for things like cake. Instead of going into the cake shop that cost extra, I would just go in the cafe promenade, which was opposite. There was absolutely no shortage of free food on this cruise, so I didn't feel like I needed to pay extra for any more. We had lunch in the buffet and we bought our cups here to refill them. We could refill them whenever we wanted to. There were two soda machines in the buffet, two by Sorrento's Pizza and another one in the sports court near the kind of hot dog stand. One disappointment for me when it came to the buffet was the labelling of food. It was sporadic to say the least. If you were lucky there would be a sign that said something like vegetable pie. No more information about what's in the vegetable pie but a lot of the time there were no labels for what the food was at all so it was was kind of a bit of a lucky dip. You could of course ask the crew but you don't really want to be asking the crew what every single thing is. If you were vegan or you had some sort of intolerance I think you would have an easier time in the buffet on cruise lines like P&O, cruise lines like Morella where they have the lists and all of the allergens marked. You won't find cookies like this on any other cruise line though, so I suppose that is the trade-off. I know what these are, these do not need a label. I tested many of them on this cruise and they were brilliant. We had a balcony cabin right at the front of deck 13 and we loved it. The balcony was in this front section here, so the cabin felt quite protected by the cabins above and below. It did get very windy here though and very foggy, but that is just Norway for you. Our cabin was very spacious, there was lots of storage, the bathroom was nice, we had a proper shower door in the bathroom and the shower itself was very very powerful. We also had a kettle too which is always appreciated and the usual things like a safe, like a mini bar. I mostly drink peppermint tea so I took some peppermint tea bags from the buffet to keep in my cabin so that I could have my morning cup of peppermint tea. They did have iced tea in the buffet along with some other juices and I've never really drunk iced tea before so I decided to give it a go. I'm definitely not going to be switching from my regular tea to iced tea but it was not terrible, it was okay. My last cruise was on an ex-Royal Caribbean cruise ship from the 1990s so it was interesting to see the change in bathroom design over the last 20 or so years. If I had to find a negative about the cabin it would be that the mattress protector on the bed kept getting kind of rocked up and it wasn't really very comfortable to sleep on this. Overall though it was decent. I still slept well on this cruise even when I went to bed with the cup of Coke Zero. I consumed a lot of Coke Zero on this cruise. Our daily schedule for the next day said that we would be visiting Stravanger on Norway's Constitution Day. At the time that meant nothing to me but it quickly became very obvious when we disembarked the ship. Constitution Day is a national holiday in Norway where the streets are filled with celebrations and parades and music. There were thousands of children, thousands and thousands of children, flags, national dress, you name it. There was music playing everywhere and it was really nice to be a part of that. Everyone we met and we spoke to welcomed us to Norway. They said that it was nice that we were there for our special day. And I found this graffiti which I think looks exactly like me on this Royal Caribbean cruise. As lovely as Stravanger was, it is a pretty big city and I was looking forward to visiting some of the smaller ports with the scenery like you imagine when you think about cruising to Norway. Checking the app again for dinner, it said again there were no spaces before 8.30. We decided to kind of chance our luck and go down to the restaurant and to our surprise there were two lines there, one for people with reservations and one for people without reservations. We stood there maybe five minutes in the line, ten minutes, not too long and then we were seated. So I don't really understand the point of the reservation system if you don't really need a reservation. Maybe they released half of the reservation spaces. I don't know. It was all a bit strange. We were always put in the exact same section in the exact same restaurant which did seem a bit odd. It wasn't a problem at all, it just seemed like a really strange way to do it and the restaurant wasn't my favourite. What is absolutely amazing about cruise ship restaurants though is being able to eat your meal and then just stand up and leave when you're done. You don't have to wait for a bill, you don't have to do anything. It is strange coming back from a cruise and going out to eat on land and having to wait to pay for your food. Not the same. Your Britishism of the week is what we call the bit of paper that you get at the end of the meal that tells you how much you have to pay. Here in the UK that is called the bill. You ask for the bill when you finish with your food. As far as I know in the US and some other countries you call this the check. Let me know where you're from and what you would call this. Our waiters in the main dining room were always great and always really friendly. We never had to wait for anything and we would order on the menus that were on our phone. One thing I really like about the Royal Caribbean app is that you can see the dinner menu 
menu before you go to dinner so you can decide what you want. If there's nothing you really fancy on there, you can go somewhere else. On the main dining room menu, the main menu, there's one vegetarian option. And I'm very used to cruising with cruise lines like MSC or P&O or Morella where there's a lot more vegetarian choice. Royal have made a lot of progress with their vegan menu. They do have a separate vegan menu. I did eat from it a few times, but I always found the things on there to be quite plain and quite healthy. I don't know about you, but I don't really go on a cruise just to eat rice and asparagus. There was just so much choice and so many things I preferred in the other venues on board. There were so many places to get food included in your cruise fare. So we would eat in the buffet. We would get a wrap from 270. We would go to Cafe Promenade. We would get pizza. I do have a full food review on my website, so check that out if you want to see everything that I ate. I think this is my favorite creation. I made this in the buffet. It was a donut. It was very, very sugary and I have a very sweet tooth. So I absolutely love this. Royal Caribbean do desserts very, very well. I had some amazing desserts on this cruise. Our next port was Garanga and we had the most amazing sailing. Our ship stopped at the Seven Sisters waterfall and we did a 360 turn. The captain actually had his drone flying as we did the spin and we got to see the footage of that when the captain did a Q&A later in the cruise. That Q&A was also broadcast to everybody's cabins on the Royal Caribbean channel. The entertainment team on board were absolutely brilliant and our cruise director Joff was everything that you want in a cruise director. He was really friendly, he was funny, he was very helpful, you could always ask him questions and he was very much a visible face around the ship. Sometimes you'll go on a cruise and you'll never see the cruise director at all but we would see Joff all the time. Even if I was in my cabin by myself I would still see Joff because he would be on the Royal Caribbean TV channel. Garango was beautiful and we walked from the ship up by the waterfalls and then down the streets. The population of Garanga is actually only 250 and the majority of those people do work now in tourism. It was really, really easy to walk around the port as it was every port in Norway and I could not believe how polite and friendly everybody was. Even the cars in Norway seem nice as in they would always let you cross the road. I know that that is a small thing but it does make a difference. You can actually rent these little tour cars which amazingly they fit two people in those and you would see these all over the port they're so tiny and they're so cute from up here we could see the skydiving simulator on the back of the cruise ship it was something that i did want to do but i was very very nervous about it if at this point they said that it was broken and i couldn't do it i would have been relieved to be quite honest with you i had so many comments though lots and lots of comments telling me that i must try it so i hope that during this cruise i would manage to get up the courage anthem of the seas has a very strange looking pod on the top which is called the north star it's basically a viewing platform that extends up on top of the cruise ship. You spend around 10 minutes in there before you come back down. I knew that I wanted to give it a go. It's something that seemed interesting, but in my daily schedule, it was showing up at around $20 and I didn't really want to do it $20 worth. I'm glad now though that I didn't book it when I saw it for that price because later on I was in the right place at the right time and I saw complimentary tickets coming up on my phone. If you know me, you will know that complimentary is my kind of price. After our morning in Garanga, we boarded the ship and we headed to the North Star. The first thing that happened was that we were all weighed before we were allowed to go into it. This is because if the North Star broke down for any reason, everybody has to be able to zip line off of the North Star. And for that reason, you can't weigh over 300 pounds. That is the weight limit of the North Star's zip line. Something I had never considered before this. The journey in the North Star was exactly what I had expected. There weren't too many of us in there, which was good. And I was very happy that we got to go on it for free. The ship has a lot of outside space and we did get some sunshine during our cruise. It was still chilly though, it definitely was chilly. I didn't see many people swimming outside, but the ship does have an outside pool, an inside pool, little pools in the solarium, and also this pool where the water just goes around and around in a circle. It is a bit odd because they have to have a lifeguard there watching this pool. So if you're in there, someone is staring right at you as you go round and round in a circle, but the kids seem to really like it. There was always people in this pool. One area that I did miss on the ship was a proper promenade deck. This is what the promenade deck looks like on board Anthem of the Seas. 
At this point in our cruise, I was wondering why I hadn't seen any sort of formal night yet, and I was waiting for them to announce the big Broadway show. We had seen some shows in the theatre up till this point, and all of them were fantastic, but Royal are famous for their big Broadway shows, and I really didn't want to miss that. The actual theatre on board I thought was designed pretty badly, worse than any other cruise ship theatre I found anyway. This is the view from the front row of the top level. We learned as the cruise went on which seats weren't good and we would just get there early and get the good seats, but we would sit there and watch other people come in, sit down, realise they couldn't see a thing and then move their seats. We didn't have to pre-book any of the shows in the theatre, you just showed up and sat down. I would recommend though that you get there at least kind of 20 minutes early if you want a decent seat and they did have bar service back in the theatre again. In addition to the main dining room, the buffet, the cafe promenade and Sorrento's Pizza, there are a couple of other places where you could get food. There was a cafe by the 270 Lounge which served things like wraps and sandwiches and salads. I absolutely loved this area and we would often just go by here to pick up a panini or a cheese melt or something like that. There was also a restaurant area by the Solarium and I never saw it open during our cruise. I wish I had made a bit more of an effort to go and check this out, but there were just so many places to eat on board. I didn't pay for any speciality meals on board and I really didn't feel the need to. Even just eating the included food, there was no way that I could eat everything that was included, as much as I tried. There was also a hot dog stand by the sports court and my meat eating friends tell me that it was very good. They didn't have any vegetarian options there and I didn't really fancy just eating a roll full of onions. I mean, probably be alright, but I never ate there. I would normally just go to the buffet. We would often visit the sports court area in the evenings to fill up our soda cups and they would do a lot of things with this space. The main use of this space was for bumper cars but they also did sports here, they had dance classes here, there was almost always something happening in this space. The way that the go-karts kind of tucked away on the sides I thought was pretty cool and at the top level they had an Xbox area, they had an arcade and they had various things like air hockey tables. When we visited Olden, we were joined by another cruise ship, the Ballette, owned by Fred Olsen. We were docked, we got there first, so Ballette had to tender her passengers to shore. We were lucky during our cruise because every port stop we had, we docked right in the centre of town, and we were very rarely with any other cruise ships. We took a walk through Olden and we found this adorable little church. The population of Olden is only around 500, so when we were out and wandering around, most of the other people that we saw had also come from a cruise ship. To me, Norway always feels incredibly safe, incredibly clean, and everybody is incredibly friendly there. It is very easy to explore Norway without excursions. There are certain things that you will need some mode of transport to get to. If you are going to Olden, there's a glacier that most people go and see. I have been to see that one in the past so we didn't this time but there's a shuttle kind of bus that will take you there there's a hop on hop off bus too you don't need to pay the cruise line excursion prices as far as cruise destinations go i think norway is my favorite cruise destination of all time i mean look at this to my surprise we actually had two formal nights during this seven night cruise and the first one we missed completely we ate in the buffet and apart from the main dining room dress code nothing else really changed around the ship if it wasn't for me noticing on the daily schedule that it said formal night, I probably would have missed the second formal night too. Royal Caribbean do have a dress code for their formal nights, but it very much feels like a suggestion. And if you don't want to take part in it, it's very easy to avoid on a Royal Caribbean cruise. We did see some guests wearing long dresses, some people wearing tuxedos. If you do want to dress up, you're definitely not going to look out of place. But at the same time, there would be guests there wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And I think that's really what Royal Caribbean do very well, is the choice. There's everything. There's one end of the scale, the other end of the scale, and everything in between. I absolutely loved having the soda cups. It made getting a drink so easy, but occasionally we wouldn't have the cups on us and we would order a drink in a bar. Something strange did happen that I don't think I've experienced on a cruise before. And when I would try and order a soft drink, it would always kind of go like this. I would say something like, could I please have a Diet Coke? And the instant reaction a lot of the time would be, oh, with what? And I would say, oh, nothing, please, just, just plain Diet Coke. And they would say, are you sure you don't want any rum or you don't want any vodka? And I'd say, no, thank you. I don't blame the waiters of course, all of the waiters were very friendly, they were very helpful but it felt as though they had been told maybe to try and kind of bump up I guess the sale value, I'm not sure. It did just strike me as odd though, especially since they do have Alcoholics Anonymous meetings on the cruise. So to try and promote that just felt a bit weird to me. 
I discovered all kinds of new drinks and drink combinations from these soda machines. Sometimes I would mix random flavors together because why not? They were Coke machines, not Pepsi machines, and I do prefer Pepsi, I am on Team Pepsi, but it was that type of really good Coke, you know, like the type that you get in McDonald's that just tastes better than any other Coke? It was that, so it was very, very good. I did buy myself a Pepsi actually at one point during this cruise when we had walked up a mountain, Mount Floen in Bergen. I'd been to Bergen before and I'd taken the funicular railway up to the top and walked back down. I didn't remember it being that far, so we decided this time that we would walk. I didn't really realise it was a mountain, to be honest with you, but we walked up a mountain. The ticket to ride up the hill on the funicular is only around £6. The cruise line will try and sell you that for around £60. So if you're able to walk the 10 minutes to the bottom of the train and buy your own ticket, it is so much cheaper. It's a really nice walk down too. I wouldn't recommend that everybody does the walk up. My Fitbit said I had walked up 135 flights of stairs. It took us around three and a half hours in total. I'm glad we did it but I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. It was quite hard. I definitely felt like I deserved that Pepsi when we got to the top and we bought this sugary pastry here too. Amazingly, it did not rain during our trip to Bergen and Bergen is the rainiest city in Norway, which is already quite a rainy country. So we got very, very lucky with that. It was on this night that we saw the Broadway show and the queue went down from the theatre all the way down past Sorrento's Pizza. I have never seen such a long line to get into a theatre on a cruise ship or anywhere else. I did worry that we wouldn't be able to get a seat, but the theatre is deceptively big. A lot more people fit in there than you think will fit in there. And as long as you get there, say, half an hour early, you'll be totally fine. We sat on the lower level and we had a seat with a decent view. Unfortunately, we had some very, very, very annoying guests in front of us who talked through the entire show. I'm not talking, you know, a sneaky say something to the person next to you. No, full bone conversations. I was behind them. I could hear every single word. I don't even know how the people next to them or in front of them managed to tolerate this. But you have to be very loud to stop people from hearing rock of ages. They left about an hour into the two hour show and you could feel everybody in in the theatre sigh, just a massive sigh of relief. There were 4,000 guests on our cruise and I met some of the loveliest people that I have ever met on a cruise. If you stop me and talk to me, thank you so much. It was absolutely amazing. It's just such a shame that there are a few people on board who were so badly behaved. Other days I watched people in the theater and I could see them on their phone, scrolling through their Facebook stories, going on their online banking, sending messages to each other, to the point where the singers would call out people who were just sat there on their phones. And it was just such a shame because everybody else was so nice. These people just really stood out. The show was absolutely brilliant. The acting was amazing, the dancing, the singing, the set design, everything was fantastic. There were so many people in the show team too and it was backed by a full live band. It was a really, really good show. I have a bonus Britishism for you here. This is something I found in the Royal Caribbean shop and Fanny does not mean the same thing in the UK. I will let you Google that one. <laughs> I did manage to muster up enough courage on this cruise to try out the skydiving simulator. It was not as easy as I hoped that it would be, but I'm very glad that I did do it. Watch this video next to watch me skydive. The air comes at you at 160 kilometers per hour. Very scary, but watch this next. 